In the fall of 1896, Dutch physicist Peter Zeeman came across a rather fascinating phenomenon, that spectral lines produced by radiating atoms would split into several components when these atoms were placed in a strong magnetic field. As wondrous as this discovery was, there were no means of explaining the phenomenon, for quantum mechanics hadn't even begun development, and wouldn't for another four years. Scientists did have a firm understanding of the laws of classical electromagnetism at the time, though, and quickly began to question something almost immediately after the discovery of the Zeeman effect. If spectral lines split when subjected to magnetic fields, do they also split when subjected to electric fields? The answer to this question would come two decades later, from a German physicist dedicated to proving one of his colleagues wrong, by the name of Johannes Stark. Stark began teaching when he was promoted to lecturer in 1900 at the University of Göttingen, just three years after receiving his doctorate from the same institution under the supervision of Eugen von Lommel. Stark's specialty lay in his experimentalism, and his attention during his time at Göttingen slowly turned towards canal rays. These rays are the oppositely charged sister of cathode rays and are caused by positively charged ions moving through an electric potential difference between an anode and a cathode. In 1905, Stark made his first major contribution when he set up a canal ray and observed the spectra of light coming from different directions inside the tube. What he found was that the frequency of light for the emissions in the direction the rays were traveling was higher than the emissions in the opposite direction in which the rays were traveling. The most clear evidence of this was a shift in spectral lines to the left for emissions in the direction of travel and a shift in lines to the right for emissions opposite the direction of travel. Stark had proven the Doppler effect in canal rays for the first time, offering support for the effect's universality over all types of waves. Stark's canal ray experiments at Göttingen, as fruitful as they were, were only the first half of his impactful scientific career. He moved to the Technical University of Hanover in 1906, where he became a professor of physics. Along with his experimentalism, he also had a natural talent for writing and was editor of a scientific magazine while teaching and conducting experiments. He was highly intrigued by new and bold theories such as relativity and quantum mechanics, and he used his magazine to give up-and-coming scientists an outlet to propose new ideas in their articles. One of these relatively unknown scientists was Albert Einstein, to whom Stark offered an article on the topic of special relativity, a theory Einstein had published in 1905. Stark's research after moving to Hanover drew inspiration from a fellow Göttingen theorist by the name of Voldemar Vogt. Since the discovery of the Zeeman effect, many had been wondering if it was possible to split spectral lines with an electric field, and Vogt and Stark, at Göttingen, were two of the foremost in the theory regarding this question. The biggest problem many scientists were facing with electric fields was the highly conductive nature of luminous gases and vapors. To add to this, the theoretical answer Folk emerged with was that an electric field would have too little of an impact on spectral lines to even observe. Folk even showed Stark an experimental setup in which he tried to produce the effect on sodium to no avail. This didn't deter Stark, however, for he went back to his lab with a different mindset, to prove Vogt wrong. Stark believed that what Vogt was missing was that he wasn't trying to produce the effect on lighter elements. He believed that if he could subject elements such as hydrogen and helium to extreme electric fields, he could get some form of spectral line split. He continued his canal ray research through his time at Hanover, and later during his time at Aachen University, where he moved in 1908 as a professor. It wasn't until 1913, seven years after he began his attempts, that he was finally successful. After subjecting canal rays through a tube of hydrogen with an electric field intensity of 10,000 volts per centimeter, he observed the splitting of two of its spectral lines. These two lines split into five components when the magnetic field was perpendicular to the direction of motion, and three components when the magnetic field was parallel to the direction of motion. Stark published these results in 1913, and the effect later became known as the Stark effect in his name.
The Stark effect was one of the great triumphs of early quantum mechanics because of how it offered support for its theories. Paul Epstein and Carl Schwarzschild used quantum theory to explain the Stark effect, and Niels Bohr would also use the Stark effect to help support his new quantum structure of the model of the atom and explain the spectral lines of hydrogen electron emission further. The aforementioned utility of Stark's experimental results led to high praise, and he ended up winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1919 for his discovery of the Doppler effect in canal rays and the splitting of spectral lines in electric fields. Life after the Nobel Prize for Stark, however, took an ironic turn. Although Stark was a brilliant experimentalist, he was known to have a combative personality, and this came to the forefront of his reputation in his later years in many ways. After reading Stark's discovery in the paper, an Italian physicist named Antonino Lucerdo realized he had stumbled across the same phenomenon earlier in his experiments while researching the Doppler effect in canal rays. There was some pushback at the time to rename the effect to the stark Lucerdo effect, but due to Stark's combativeness and the difference in how the effect was discovered, Stark through intent and Lucerdo through circumstance, the name never took root. Stark retired a few short years after winning the Nobel Prize, mainly due to his controversial views, which caused him to become isolated from the scientific community. His relationships with many scientists, especially Einstein, deteriorated as they headed into the Second World War, as Stark, along with Philip Leonard, joined the Nazi party and worked to incorporate German science with fascism. Stark, who once provided an outlet for relativity and quantum mechanics, in his later years renounced these two theories as they gained popularity, and he became very critical of new scientific theories. After the war, he spent four years in prison due to his political affiliation. He moved to Upper Bavaria for the last years of his life after imprisonment, where he died in 1957 at the age of 83. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.